Hey, good morning. I'm John Olson, the right guy to call. Welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to be uh, preparing one of my favorite dishes, especially for breakfast actually, um, cream spinach. I know. Do we need another cream spinach video on, along with the zillions that are out there on YouTube? I think we do. Um, I do it a little bit differently. I, uh, to cream my spinach, I use goat cheese, fresh goat cheese, and um, I think that really works well. Uh, the way I do it is, is quick, it's easy, you can have a batch of uh, cream spinach ready to eat oh, in about 10 minutes or so. So I think uh, we do need to have one more um, uh, cream spinach video on YouTube. I think you'll re really enjoy it uh, once you try it. And uh, while we're at it, let me uh, take just a moment to give a shout out to Helen Rennie of uh, Boston, Massachusetts, a cooking instructor. Um, uh, a while back, she uh, took a look at my hollandaise sauce uh, video, and uh, was she loved it so much that uh, she d decided to adopt my method as her method for making hollandaise sauce. I think that's a wonderful honor, and um, and she's adjusted it a little bit so that it's more to her taste, um, and that's a wonderful thing. You know, mine hollandaise is just a basic sauce. You know, you, you expand from there. So uh, when you're done with my video here, pop on over to, uh, to Helen Rennie's uh, YouTube page and check out her video. She's got a lot of them, and uh, they're pretty good. I, uh, I enjoy them. I, actually, one of these days I want to try and make it up to Boston, Massachusetts and take one of her classes. I think that would be a lot of fun. Anyway, enough of this chit-chat. Let's get over here to the stove, and we'll get started. Okay, so first let's do a quick rundown of the ingredients that you're going to need. Um, of course, you're going to need butter. You're going to need one shallot. Uh, nutmeg, very important. You've got to have nutmeg, preferably whole nutmeg. But if you just have the uh, powder, I guess that'll work. Um, if you're going to use whole nutmeg, of course, you've got to have a microplane for... Uh, Shaving, uh, you know, making dust out of your nutmeg. <clears throat> of course, you need a decent knife. Um, I use canned spinach, and I'll tell you why. Um, regular spinach, yes, it maybe tastes a little bit better, but you really don't notice it um, once the dish is done. Uh, you know, I like uh, fresh spinach in a salad something where you're eating it raw. Anything else, um, it just takes a long time to, uh, to cook it down and make it usable for you know, when you're cooking something. So I prefer just to go with canned spinach. You can also use, I guess, frozen spinach as well. But uh, I use canned spinach and it works really well, so that's that. Um, <clears throat> and of course, goat cheese. And this is the goat cheese that I use. I get it at a local store. Um, it's very good. I enjoy it. Uh, I like it. And I've left it out on the counter for a while, so it's uh, relatively soft, which is what you want to do. You want it to be a bit soft so that um, it blends in with the, uh, with the spinach uh, rather quickly. Um, also, uh, pepper, uh, fresh ground pepper, black pepper, uh, some herbs, uh, some garlic powder. You can use fresh garlic, but again, for this sort of thing, it really doesn't matter. Um, you know, uh, garlic powder does the job, and it's quick. Um, and, of course, uh, salt. So, uh, did I leave anything out? I don't think so. So, uh, okay, let's get, uh, let's get busy here. The first thing we're going to do is, uh, we're not going to use an entire can of spinach. So, um, we'll use about half of the can. Okay, so, uh, to start out, Get, start getting things a little bit prepped up here. Um, you're going to want to drain the spinach. So I'm just going to drain off some of the liquid here. 
Uh, you don't want it too wet when you start out. I'm not going to discard the liquid, however, because if, uh, if I need to add moisture back into the thing, I will be uh, putting this liquid back in there. Okay. And one more thing to be done before we uh, start cooking <coughs> is we take the spinach, of course, out of the can, lay it down on your on your board. <coughs> That's about half a can or so. And we're going to cut it. And you're just going to chop it across this way to about uh, maybe half inch or so sections. And turn it around. Look at all that moisture that's still in there. And then we're going to do the same this way. So now our spinach is ready to go in the pan. Okay. And so let's, uh, let's get started here. While we're doing this, of course, we can start getting our pan hot. The next thing we'll uh, do is we'll chop up the shallot. And uh, there are many ways of chopping a shallot, I guess. The way that I like to do it is pretty much the way I do onions when I want to chop them fine. That's by just slicing through it like this. And then cutting it nice and fine. You know, if you're out shopping for a knife, you can get yourself one of these old Japanese uh, high carbon blades. They're uh, they're wonderful. Uh, yes, it discolors and it will rust if you leave it in water. But boy, oh boy, it just is really a, a great knife. And the, the edge stays, it's just got a great edge to it, and it just almost never needs sharpening. I really, really love this knife. Um, okay, so that, that looks like uh, about enough uh, shallot. If we need more, we can always add. Okay, and so... Of course, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to melt some butter in the pan, and this is one of those occasions where I don't put a little water in the pan before I melt the butter um, in order to keep the butter from burning. I want the butter to burn a little bit, to, uh, to brown a little bit, to get that flavor out of it. This is, uh, if you've watched my hollandaise sauce video, you see that I use uh, water so I don't uh, burn the butter. Well, this is uh, an occasion where that does not apply. There, we get our butter in there. <clears throat> and then we just pile in those shallot choppings. Yeah. And we're just going to basically caramelize the uh, shallots. You know, we're going to bring out the, the real flavor in them and you can tell when they're just about ready. They, you know, they change color, of course. <clears throat> and the, oh, the aroma is amazing. I, that's one of the things I love about cooking with shallots when you, when you uh, caramelize them like this, you saute them, they just, the aroma that comes out from them is just, uh, it's intoxicating. Got the shallots almost ready here. All right. And 
and now we'll add some spinach to it. Okay, and I thought I had the camera rolling when I added the spinach to the shallots, but apparently I did not, but uh, no big deal there. It wasn't a lot to see. You add the spinach to the shallots, you combine them, you add in uh, some herbs, uh, some of these Italian herbs, some garlic, uh, a little bit of salt, and, uh, oops, forgot the black pepper. Let's throw some black pepper in there. And just stir it around and combine it well. So it's ready to get the goat cheese. And uh, if it starts to dry out a little bit, you know, you're running it at a at a medium heat down here. <clears throat> uh, if it starts to look a little dry while you're working, you just take some of that uh, spinach juice that you had in the can and add it back into the spinach. Of course, if you want, you could experiment with uh, using wine in here with this. That would uh, that might work well, or other uh, things to uh, keep the liquid content at the right point. But that's about it. <clears throat> so we, now we just take our uh, our goat cheese, and I'm taking a fairly big portion. I like my um, spinach very very creamy. So that's, uh, what is that, it's about an inch and a half uh, across by about an inch or so. And you can see it's nice and soft here, so it just goes right in there. And that'll mix in with the goat cheese, with the uh, spinach very easily. And again, you just uh, go ahead and combine this. And you can see the goat cheese... <coughs> It's substantial enough that, uh, that it really doesn't get lost too easily in with the spinach. Um, I've tried uh, Greek yogurt for this. Uh, it's just too thin. I've tried sour cream. Uh, not so great. Not as good as, uh, as using goat cheese. I've tried um, cream cheese. Yeah, I've tried a lot of stuff. And the thing that I think works the absolute best and tastes the best for cream spinach is to use goat cheese. Um, there are various flavors of goat cheese also. You can get the honey flavored or the, the balsamic and fig or the herb or whatever. Um, I usually use just the um, the plain. I usually have the plain on hand here in the kitchen. But uh, I have done it with the balsamic and fig or the uh, the honey goat cheese and that's uh, pretty good too. And you see here we go. We're you know just about ready to almost ready to plate this. This is uh, that's all. You just mix it together. And you taste it. Oh, that's wonderful. And you discover that what you're missing is the nutmeg. We didn't even put nutmeg in there yet. And I use a lot of nutmeg, and uh, that's the way I make it. And that's you know, what I recommend, of course. I, I have a. I think that nutmeg is essential for cream spinach, and so I use quite a bit of it in here. And again, you know, I like to shave it fresh right off of a nut. Just combine that, mix it up. And this should be just about ready for, for my breakfast. Oh, oh yeah. The goat cheese, the herbs, a little bit of garlic, shallots, and all that nutmeg. Oh man, this is really delicious. And and that's basically it. I mean, if you want, you can uh, cook it down a little bit more if you want to uh, make it um, thicker. Well, I think it's fine just like it is. It's cooked. It's ready to go. ready to uh, go to the next step of making your breakfast. Okay, so what am I having for breakfast? <clears throat> well, of course, there's coffee. <clears throat> and I'm going to have a 
toasted slice of this wonderful wholesome harvest nine grain seed and nut bread that I get over at the local shop right oh guys please don't stop carrying this stuff ever it's just wonderful bread I love it and uh, I'm using my watermelon knife uh, as a bread knife because uh, well I never use it as a watermelon knife I find it works really well though as a bread knife so cut a nice thick slice of bread one of the things also that I like about, uh, that's kind of the icing on the cake with the Wholesome Harvest Bread, it doesn't come cut, pre-cut, so you cut whatever slice you want, whatever size. <clears throat> and then we take a nice little chunk, maybe about a, about a half a tablespoon or so of butter, Yes, yes, if you're on a uh, low-fat diet, well, you know, you don't eat this every day, so uh, it, it, I guess it's okay to have once in a while, but uh, look, life is to be enjoyed, so enjoy. And we melt some butter in the pan, again, without water. <coughs> we lay our slice of toast in there, and let that toast up, just like that. And, uh, Gee, is there anything more boring than uh, watching paint dry or bread toast? <laughs> All right, and then <clears throat> once your bread is toasted on one side, that's about right for me. I'll take that off the pan for a moment and put in a bit more butter. that and lay down our slice of toast in there and again we wait for that side to brown up okay and while my <coughs> toast was toasting <coughs> I was getting all of my other ingredients for my breakfast ready to go I have here some nice sliced roast beef, a an egg white that I've whisked until frothy. It's not stiff, but it has lots of air in it. Uh, it's going to be part of it. Of course, an egg yolk, and I've got it in a glass here with a little oil to keep it from sticking to the glass. And that's it, so now we're going to take uh, gonna take some of that cream spinach and we're going to put that down on the toast here. Just like that. And then we're going to fry up <coughs> the egg white and the egg yolk separately. And add that to mix with the to this uh, mix with the roast beef. What I'm going to do with my egg <coughs> is I'm going to fry up the egg white. This is my uh, form for doing things like that, keeping it all together. Uh, it's an old uh, crab meat tin. It's going to go there in the in the pan. We'll add in a little bit of this herbed olive oil around the sides this will also we should get some of that aha that's warm around the edges of the tin so the less likely to have the egg white stick to the tin and then gonna fry up 
dry that up. Aha! Well, some of that leaked out. I guess that's just the way it goes. Of course, we can trim that away anytime we like. throw it away. We'll just bury that under the, uh, the egg white over here on the, uh, on the cream spinach. <laughs> Once the egg is set up a little bit, you can get it to release. If you do it right, if you get it frothy enough, you can have, uh, instead of just a little froth on top, it, it tends to fluff the egg white a little bit, which is, is nice. <clears throat> That's just about right. Cover that for a moment to firm up the top a little bit. top of the creamed spinach and take the roast beef and we'll roll that up any way we like. Make a little roast beef flowers and maybe a little in the center. You're going to see that this really doesn't matter, this piece in the center here as far as visual impact is concerned. Because what we're going to do, we take the rest of our cream spinach and put that on top. Better still, we'll put our cream spinach there and we'll lay it around just like that as a cradle for the egg yolk. Ah, where's the yolk? A skeleton walks into a bar says bartender give me a drink and a mop. <laughs> yuck yuck. Alright so <clears throat> The final part of this equation now is to uh, fry the egg yolk. You can either poach the egg yolk, which is a bit easier than frying the egg yolk, or you can fry the egg yolk. I'm going to try and fry the egg yolk today. You have to be really, really careful with this. Um, make sure that you've got oil in the pan where the yolk is going to be. Um, and it's not too hot. If it's really, really hot, what's going to happen is... Um, <clears throat> the yolk will get too hot too quickly inside, build up pressure, and quite possibly burst on you and leak all over the pan, and you don't want that. You want the yolk whole when it hits the, uh, the top of your breakfast. <clears throat> so we'll take this egg yolk that's been sitting here patiently in a glass, and we'll add it to the pan. And... If all goes well, it will not burst. And just let that cook just lightly. In fact, we'll even cover it like that so that it gets a little bit cloudy on the top. But that's okay because we're going to open that up. It has to do this, of course, with a glass lid. So you can see what's going on inside. Uh, with your egg yolk. If you 
you want, you can. Just a little water in there for steam. The steam will, since it's very hot, of course, will tend to cook the top of the yolk a bit. I would put it in there. Take that egg yolk and carefully pick it up as we slide it on top of our <laughs> on top of our breakfast and there you got it. You have it. And there's a really wonderful breakfast. Of course this takes a bit longer than uh, than ten minutes. It's just the just the um, Cream spinach it takes 10 minutes. Okay, so here we go. This is the finished piece. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some habanero powder to it. I think the habanero powder really goes well with the cream spinach. You don't use a tremendous lot, just enough to give it some color and give it a little heat. The heat really, like I said, I think it works really nice with the cream spinach. And that's about it. I guess if you had anything you could put in there, you could drop a little something extra into the center there. And that's it. There it is. Cream spinach for breakfast with a fried egg and uh, sliced roast beef. Bon appetit, huh? Yeah, that's, that's a wonderful breakfast. So there you have it, cream spinach and my breakfast. <laughs> well, I'm going to get going here. Uh, like I said before, go head on over to Helen Rennie's uh, YouTube page and watch uh, some of her videos. She's got some great stuff over there. Helen, again, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, I guess I'll uh, get myself ready to eat here and, uh, boy, this looks delicious. It's going to taste even better than that. So, till I see you next time, enjoy your life.